Welcome to the Social Ninjas Podcast. I am your co-host, Kyle Mitchell. Ooh, Kyle! Thank you. Jeremy, right, Scott, what is up, Jeremy? I just got really excited. What's up, Kyle? Are you ready for an amazing another show? I am. I am ready, and we have a very special guest with us today, Eben Britton. What's going on, man? What's up, dudes? <laughs> sup? Sup? How are you? The Social Fantastic. Ninjas. Social Ninjas, you- man. Great name. What did it? What was that name born out of? You want to tell him? You want me? Oh my God! (laughs) I'll tell him. Basically, both of us uh, had histories of social anxiety, and just through a lot of practices, we got over our social anxiety. Now we help other people who are having challenges with social anxiety and just anxiety in general. A bunch of other, you know challenges and um so now we call ourselves the social ninjas and we have our dojo and we're always you know we have that self-support we're working on ourselves and we have our community and it's just uh that's my way of saying it i guess it depends yeah, if you ask me which beautiful. day you're right i that's love good. that man where's the dojo is it the dojo of life or or do you have an actual dojo life for now yes yes i love it unless unless you want to collaborate on a social ninjas dojo you know featuring one day Evan Brighton. Ooh. Britain. <laughs> Britain. There you go. See? Perfect example. We make mistakes every now and then. Absolutely, dude. Life is all about stepping in shit. <laughs> Jeremy. <laughs> we should for have recorded that. Yeah, I was waiting for you to do it, Kyle. So basically, before we were recording, I was <laughs> telling him how I, I had a challenging morning. And I was like, all right, I have to at least run because I didn't do my morning routine. I usually do my morning routine every morning. I was like, all right, I have to at least run. So I'm like, oh, dragging my feet as I do my run slash I was going to dance. And I put my phone down to start dancing. And when I go to put my phone down, I stepped in uh, dog poop. (laughs) I just like smelled it right away. I was like, no. And um, Evan had a really good... um, perspective on why as i'm having a challenging day already i stepped in dog poop what was that thing you said i can't remember i said a lot but you know what man to your point you know life is full of challenges if we start to look at life or expect life to be easy all the time it's easy to be spiritual and cool and have a good outlook when shit's going well When challenges emerge, this is when we really get to exercise in the quote unquote dojo of life. And I'm curious, you know, when you guys talk about anxiety, I think it's so incredible what you're doing in this show. Anxiety, there are many forms of anxiety. There are many people, including myself, I've suffered from anxiety attacks from the time I was about 18 years old, I'm now 33. Anxiety and panic are two of my, or are one in the same grappling partner that I have danced with for many years now. I'm now 33 years old. And just coming to an awareness around my anxiety and what that is in me, how it manifests itself, what it looks like when my mind starts running on that train of thought of anxiety and it gets far, far out there and it goes and it goes and it goes. And all of a sudden, I'm so overwhelmed by the speed at which my mind is moving that it's really difficult to feel my feet on the ground. That's the type of anxiety I feel. We all feel that social anxiety. I was having a conversation with my brother the other day about The only thing we owe ourselves and we owe or that we must do for the universe in this lifetime is to express our innate truth, the truth that emanates from our heart, from our spirit, whatever you want to call it. That thing, that vibration that runs through you at all times that wakes you up at night and says, tells you whether or not you're on your destiny path or not. That is literally the only duty we have in this life is to fully express our truth and our heart's 
uh, authenticity into the world. Now, why is that one of the greatest challenges in the human experience? To speak your truth, to live your authentic life, to be your truest self, to be honest with the world around you. Why is that? And you experience social anxiety when you pick up a phone to make a phone call, when you're in a business meeting, when you're talking to friends. It's so difficult to express your truth and to be honest because we're constantly bombarded with this idea of who we're supposed to be and what the culture and the community and all the people around us expect us to be, that we think that in assuming that role and taking on that persona from the ancient Greek persona, which means literally mask, to wear a mask, we're, we would rather live in the safety and comfort of wearing that mask than to express our true nature, our truest authentic self. So in that regard, I'm reading this book right now, or rather listening to this audio book, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Maybe you guys have read it. I highly recommend it. But he boils it down to being a, a matter of resistance, that we all face resistance in our life. And the greatest accomplishment any of us can ever experience is to overcome that resistance, to overcome that anxiety that we all feel in the expression of our soul's truth. Um, and that is really the nature of art, and that's really the nature of this lifetime. That, that resistance, that anxiety will manifest itself in our physical reality in various forms. A person telling you no, um, a person saying that you're not good enough, literal manifestations, the tree falls in the middle of the road and blocks you from being able to go down the path you were going down, etc. whatever it might be. And it's up to us. I mean, there are infinite ways around the obstacles. And for much of, for much of the time, for me, what my experience has been in overcoming myself and my own self-inflicted anxiety and resistance that inhibits me from expressing my highest truth into the world. It's been to go head first into that pain, head first into that discomfort, say the thing that I'm having anxiety about saying, because when I do so, and I have the courage to express that truth and go forward with my heart's expression, I'm usually met with the universe opening up for me. The person in front of me goes, wow, Eb, amazing that you said that. I've been feeling or experiencing that same thing or a new opportunity presents itself or whatever it might be. So anxiety, whatever you wanna call it, the inner resistance that we all experience. And I would venture to say guys that just about everybody on this planet unless you come from a serenely functional background, which very few of us do, are faced with inner anxiety, our inner demons at every turn. And even as you transcend and you evolve psychologically and spiritually and emotionally and you overcome obstacles and you heal old wounds in yourself, you are constantly going to be confronted by walls, resistance, the demons within that are constantly trying to keep you safe and keep you in a box, keep you comfortable. And it's up to us with the, with the help, the tool that is our will to overcome that shit. That's really well said. And it's, for me, it's a practice. I, I go through he, heaps and, you know, heaps and flows where I'm just feel like a superhero or I, for example, I'll never forget that when I hired my first coach, I had so much resistance to hire the coach and then I finally yes. did and whoa, <laughs> uh, yeah. it, my life exponentially improved. And then there's always like that next thing. What's that next? Yes. What's that next thing that's out of really scary and out of my comfort zone that'll take me to the next step. And Absolutely. Part of my life. Absolutely, um, man. Be before we go any further, real quick, I forgot to uh, <laughs> ask who is Evan? What do you do? Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. What do I do? Um, 
I do a lot of things. At one time, I was an NFL player. I played in the National Football League for six years as an offensive lineman. Through that experience, I suffered a laundry list of injuries, dislocated shoulder multiple times, herniated discs in my back, suffered excruciating sciatic nerve damage down my right leg, which left my right foot numb to this day. There's still some numbness in my right toes. Suffered a number of concussions and sub-concussive hits. A lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, a lot of substance abuse, Adderall, alcohol, opiates, very intimate experience with many substances. Through all of that, that really laid the foundation for me to do what I, what my true life's purpose is, which is to through my sensibility, my sensitivity, my vulnerability, share my story with others to pave the way or show them the door to self-empowerment, healing, self-transformation, evolution, all of that stuff. And how do I do that? That started in cannabis advocacy. Cannabis was a very powerful healing mechanism for me during my football career when the pills made me feel insane, wreaked havoc on my digestive system, on my liver and kidneys, had me waking up in the middle of the night with cold sweats and severe withdrawal symptoms. Cannabis was always something I could come to and get a good night's sleep, wake up the next day feeling recovered, connect with my loved ones, um, et cetera, brought me back to myself time and time again when the pills led me further and further away from myself and my truth. Cannabis was always something that brought me back to center. So coming out of my football career, I very organically fell into cannabis advocacy, namely as a neuroprotectant and antioxidant. The NFL, football in general, the game of the game of football, the sport itself has an inherent issue of concussions which leads to CTE or chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is early onset dementia or Alzheimer's. Cannabis has been shown through scientific research by the federal government that the cannabinoids, the chemical compounds found in the cannabis plant are neuroprotectants and antioxidants. You can see this in the government's patent, patent 6,630,507 cannabinoids as neuroprotectants and antioxidants, which means they've seen that these chemical compounds actually help protect the brain from damage and can help heal the brain after damage has occurred. So when I learned this about a year after retiring from the NFL, it really lit this fire in me to understand everything I could about the history and science behind the cannabis plant, how it interacts with the human body or all living creatures as every living creature on the planet has an endocannabinoid system, which means we're built to interact with the cannabis plant. We also create our own endogenous cannabinoids, anandamide, the bliss molecule, as well as a molecule called 2AE, which has a much longer uh, scientific name. And the endocannabinoid system facilitates all these properties from how we feel and deal with pain, our appetite, our mood, our sleep rhythms. So it's very therapeutic and cannabis has been around for thousands and thousands of years. I would argue since the inception of man, we have lived alongside and evolved alongside the cannabis plant as a medicine for the human animal, just like all plant medicine. So that really led me into speaking, a lot of speaking about holistic healing practices, led me into the plant medicine world led me deeper into meditation, being a truth seeker, a truth teller uh, in whatever way I could, all the time happening over the top of this undercurrent of my spiritual existence, which is from the time I was a little kid, I've wanted to express my highest, the highest version of myself into the world that I possibly could. And in the world that we live in, the culture, the conditioning that we're put under from the time we're birthed into this 
realm. There are many layers of distraction, understanding, perspective that are layered over top of our truth, our innate truth. Some of those transcend our individuality, our truth, I'm saying. Our individual truth that transcends our individuality and leads into the universal truths, the universal principles that guide all these things, nature, the nature of reality, etc. Um, so how do I do that? How do I inspire people to live in their highest greatness? That's through my podcasts, The Ebb and Flow. Uh, as well as my my last podcast project, Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson, which was a lot of fun and incredible experience. Um, and I'm currently writing my book, The Ebb and Flow, Basic Tools to Transform Your Life, which is really a look at coming out of my football career, mentally, spiritually, and physically destroyed, and the tools I use to reconfigure myself in life afterwards. Um, and that's what I do, man. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Really. I, I write, I talk, <laughs> I fucking oh, wow. communicate with people. I try to just, I do, I don't try. I'm trying, I, I'm working to eliminate the word try. I was, from I was my vocabulary. It. Um, yeah, the most famous philosopher of all time, Yoda once said, <laughs> do, yes, or do, exactly. not, do or do not, there is no try. That's exactly. probably not it's the best impression. But. One of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite all time quotes, man. <laughs> um, before I, I know Kyle has a question, but I, I, before I forget, um, what is, uh, how, what is your, your highest, most powerful version of yourself and what are some of your favorite ways in which to get to that? Well, that's ever, that's ever revealing itself, man. Um, you know, the way, the tools by which I access that point or that level of consciousness, that openness is through meditation. It's through being highly tuned to the foods I'm eating and how they make me feel. So eating a very clean diet, I eat very little sugar. I drink hardly any alcohol. I don't eat any refined carbs. Um, no wheat, no gluten, none of that shit. And that's, you know, that's really, for me, it's just what I found through my experience of having a very intimate connection with the foods I eat. As an athlete, you know, playing offensive line in the NFL, I had to be 315 pounds for so many years. And uh, with that came a, a lot of eating and eating a lot of food. And the understanding that came with that with how do I feel when I eat a lot of pasta or a lot of bread or drink a lot of beer? I feel like shit. I feel inflamed. My joints hurt. My thinking is really foggy and, and discombobulated. I don't feel really motivated. And so what happens if I eat a really clean diet, high in really healthy fats, high in protein, very low carb, high in vegetables and antioxidants? I feel really clear. I feel really inspired. I feel like I can build on what I learned the day before, you know, and carry and gain momentum. So there's that. There's a, I have a deep spiritual practice, a meditation, prayer, self-reflection, which includes the use of psychedelics and plant medicine like psilocybin and DMT and ayahuasca ceremonies and doing things like combo, which is another combo is a, it's a purging medicine from the Amazon that comes from the green monkey frog, which is a, you know, a shaman burns this medicine into your skin and you have a 15 minute super intense flu where you're vomiting everything that's in your system. Whoa. Not only a physical purge, but it's a complete emotional and spiritual purge as well. And you come out of it feeling crystal clear. And they call it the warrior cleanse because in indigenous tribal cultures, they'll do ceremonies of this medicine before they go on a hunt. And it puts them into deep synchronicity with their environment and nature and just taps them into everything happening around them and they come back with the fucking boar or the deer or whatever it is to feed the tribe and 
when you take that in this civilized environment that we find ourselves in, it's really interesting to see what you become aware of that you weren't before. Certain opportunities, certain things start coming up, synchronicities in the energy waves around you and in the frequency and all that stuff. And you get, you get put, for lack of a better term, you are put into the river of energy that flows through all things. Um, you know, and obviously that's a daily practice. You know, this is all a practice. You know, you don't really reach enlightenment and then you're just there, you know, because consciousness is infinite and eternal and beyond your possible imagination of what it is. And it goes in all sorts of directions. And we have a million and a half things to distract us and that are exciting and fun to think about and fantasize about and do and consume and all of that in our Western culture. So, you know, it's a constant practice of letting go at the end of the day. I mean, that's, that's really the, the, I had this really incredible conversation with this guy, Dr. Ted Achacoso, who's this neuroscientist mystic on my podcast, the ebb and flow. And he said, you know, man, every, everybody thinks that enlightenment is about gaining something when enlightenment is truly about the lightening of the load of yourself. You know, we're carrying around all kinds of baggage from our life. And to become enlightened is literally to let all of that shit go. And that's a constant process. Wow, oh, that was beautiful. Uh, I'm just curious, thinking back to what you said uh, earlier about diving headfirst into some pains. Could you tell us about one of those times that you had to like dive headfirst into something? What would the, what that was like, and how you got through that? Mm. Well. There are some very, there's one in particular that's a little too personal that I haven't shared on anything that I, I, I can't share about at this time. Sure, whatever you're comfortable but, with, but yeah. But beyond that, you know, we spend a lot of time avoiding the shit that's going on in our heads. And we spend a lot of time doing everything we can to turn away from the things that make us uncomfortable and the things that are pain points. And here, here's, a, here's a good example, you know, especially as I continue to go through this evolution of consciousness, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, at the end of the day, man, this is all spiritual everything happening in this dimension and in our daily lives in this physical realm, it's all a manifestation of the spirit and the unseen and the things happening behind the veil, the supreme reality that, that moves everything. But so I'll get into these really spiritual grooves where I'm really feeling it. Like today, Jeremy, like you said, you just woke up like kind of feeling like shit, like what's going on? I, I, you know, I'm not in that super creative, motivated, inspired state that I love to be in. That makes me feel so good. And that happens to all of us, man. And today for me too, I woke up and I felt really unmotivated. I felt really overwhelmed. I felt really crazy and a little bit angry and frustrated and tired and just all of that shit, you know? And so I'll get into these spiritual grooves where I'm really fucking high. I'm super high, you know, and things are just moving and I'm inspired and excited and loving life and in the gratitude and all that shit that we always talk about. And then I'll have an experience. For instance, I had this experience with a person where they really disagreed with something I said. And whatever it was that I said, they really, <laughs> they took it as an affront to them. 
And I got into an argument with them about it. And this was through social media. And so I get into this fucking argument with them. And at the end of it, it was like, you know, it, 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 the swords were put down. The guy even said like, hey, man, I started off saying I'm such a fan of you. But he said, he said that under four personal jabs about me doing frivolous posts and talking and like downplaying anything that my family's been through and saying all this like really, it's like personal shit that really bothered me. <laughs> it really bothered me. So I was like, okay, great, man. Yeah, I appreciate your support. X, Y, Z. Have a great night. Blah, blah, blah. And went to bed that night. Woke up the next day feeling okay. It was like a Friday night. Went to bed. Saturday. I'm still thinking about it. I'm thinking in my head like, man, if I only said this, if I only said this thing, I would have proven my point to that yeah. guy. If I only did this. Man, he said this, and I should have said that. And and but the whole time going, ah, Ed, just let it go, let it go, let it go. Sunday morning, so now we're like forty-eight hours out. I wake up in the morning, and I'm fucking bothered. I'm angry, you know. I'm angry about it. I'm still thinking about it. And I get into my meditation. Every morning, I wake up. I let my dogs outside. <laughs> I go and I do my stretching routine and I do a breath work routine and I come inside and I get my 20 minutes of meditation in lately. It's been 20 minutes. I usually hope to get 30 minutes in, but lately it's just been 20 minutes. I get into my 20 minutes of meditation and I start it. I start going all of a sudden I'm just like, man, I'm fucking still angry, still angry about this. And in my meditation, I go, you know what? Let's just let the fucking anger out, man. Let the warrior that wants to rage, let the warrior out. And so I did it. And I went through this whole exercise. I was like, let's see where this anger goes. And the anger, the angry warrior came out in my mind and he fucking killed this guy. And I have no idea who this guy is. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, okay, this is what you wanted to do. Okay, so you're going to just kill this guy. And I'm like, the warriors like cutting legs off and throwing them to lions and cutting the dude's <laughs> arm off and throwing them to my dogs. And the whole time, like my spiritual higher self is going, Oh, this is what you wanted to do. Huh? Are you done yet? Are you done yet? <laughs> and I'm going, no, shut the fuck up. Just let it, let it run its course. And finally cut the dude's head off and stick it on a spike outside my house. And it's done. All of a sudden, it's gone. And my point with all of this is, I listen to a lot of Ram Dass, and Ram Dass is really beautiful in this because he'll talk about how he'd go to India and he'd be in this ashram and he's meditating for two weeks. And he'd get so fucking bored and over it and his mind would just start building these fantasies and he'd spend six hours in an orgy in his meditation. He'd do just like an orgy in his meditation. He's like, oh, fuck it, man. Who cares? <laughs> you know, this thing is here, you know? And so my point there is that this anger was there and my spiritual highness, my ego had taken on this spiritual identity. And I kept telling myself I wasn't allowed to be fucking angry. I wasn't allowing myself to just feel the anger. I kept going, no, man, no, you shouldn't be angry. You're too spiritual to be angry. So finally, just allowing myself the fucking dignity of the experience of being angry, I got through it and I broke through the other side and I experienced peace and serenity again, you know, and a lot of people in our culture, you know, we want to demonize we want to demonize anger and we want to demonize all this shit. Why the fuck do you think we have serial killers and fucking insane mass killings and all this shit? It's because we're not, we don't allow people the dignity of the experience of being human. And Ram Dass had this beautiful saying in this, in this documentary I highly recommend called Becoming Nobody, 
where he's talking to this guru and Ram Dass is one of the, he's one of the all timers, man. I mean, he's one of my teachers for sure. And he said that he's talking to this guru and the guru says to him, Ram Dass, you're spending all this time trying to be holy. Why don't you spend some time trying to be human? And it was like, fuck. In our spiritual pursuit, we get into this thing where we're not allowed to be a human being. And when we just allow ourselves to be a human being, how much peace that brings us and how much serenity it brings us. So that's, that's one example of something I've experienced recently where I stopped doing the thing and that's sort of, that's a little more abstract because it, it was an emotional thing, you know, but another great example, like Jeremy, you said, you had all this anxiety about hiring a coach or for me, eight months ago or whatever it was last May when I decided to start my own podcast, The Ebb and Flow, and I had all this anxiety about just starting it. You know, and that's sort of a physical manifestation. And I just said, you know what? Fuck it, man. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look good. It doesn't have to be anything. Just taking that step and going, you know what? I'm going to start a podcast because that's what my spirit is just calling me. I, I can't not listen to this voice anymore. I can't turn over there. I can't go jack off. I can't go fucking read the thing. I can't flip through Instagram again to hide from this voice that's telling me what I have to do. You know what I mean? Or the feeling that I'm having. I can't abandon myself anymore. I have to just sit here and be with this thing. And that's even been with my anxiety, man, with the anxiety attacks. You know? Yeah, it's even like the, the indecision, the decision not to make a decision, to go back and forth. Do I do it? Do I not do it? That, that was almost worse. Absolutely, yeah. dude. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and isn't that with everything? Isn't that with everything, with finances, play, paying bills, doing the stuff? It's like the thinking about it is worse than just the doing it. You know, when you just pick yeah. up the phone and call the credit card company, it's always easier than the stress of saying, ah, I can't, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do yeah. it tomorrow. I won't deal with it. You know, it's so relatable. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so true. And what, what a fucking relief, man, when you just surrender to the thing, whatever it is the voice inside yourself, the feeling that you're having, you know, it's all, it's all energy and it, and it, it manifests itself in various ways, a thought, an experience, uh, an emotion, etc. you know, and just about being with whatever it is, man, being, being here now, being with the thing that's happening. Yeah. And it's, it's so, it's so crazy to think like how much my brain thinks it knows, but it doesn't in the sense of, I didn't have any clients when I was coaching when I, before I hired the coach and no joke, like a weekend, I got three clients. Yeah, exactly, dude. Because you took that leap of faith with the universe and the universe just opened up for you. I, and I'll oh. never forget. Like I, <laughs> I got on a call with Kyle. And I just started crying. I was like, Whoa, I just, I got hit this moment. It was a, a good moment. Amazing, dude. I love that. I love that. It's awesome, man. By low, you talk about just having a space for the anger, not having shame for the anger. And on there, I know like I resonate so much with that. Uh, I would argue that he probably triggered something from your past. It wasn't actually him. It was something like another person. Absolutely. Or something like that. And because I had that. I'm talking about my own experience. I don't want to um, project. No, you're absolutely saying, right. Uh, you're absolutely man. right. I had a, I had a, I had one of those moments where I, I had anger from being bullied and I finally had a space to let it all out and I was like screaming and yelling like really letting it out and then I remember after I snapped out of my you know my out of body experience at first I'm like so scared oh crap I just showed so much anger I was so scared to show my anger for so many years yeah um, and I just remember everyone around me was just so inspired by my ability to show anger in that way in that vulnerable way and exactly. Started, like, Oh, so freeing, though. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. 
absolutely I was like cloud man. nine i totally it totally resonates with me man anger is a big one for me and you're absolutely right i mean it's not about the guy you know like the guy i know i don't even know what he looks like i have no idea like he has no like nothing nothing he said has any bearing on the reality of my life but he touched this this thing deep inside of me that was awakened Mm. from probably my childhood maybe even a past life you know because we carry all this shit in our dna yeah and my mentor from our ancestors man my mentor always says like whenever i get triggered in that way like angry it's like a gift and i always get upset Absolutely. i'm like be quiet what do you mean he's like because it's like a, a carpet you know metaphor carpet or and we keep throwing the, the stuff and the dirt and the crap under the carpet totally. like, ah, you just, this is okay and then what happened is he kind of pushed a little bit of the dirt so it's now as it can be it's, it's visual if you see it now and you're like oh yep. what is this oh my gosh you try stuff it in there some more and then yeah. another person does something that pisses you off and the carpet just goes whoosh yeah. all that stuff that you just stuffed in there comes out and now it's an opportunity my like inner like higher self it's like oh what a great opportunity to just process all this stuff even stuffing under the carpet and that was that's a that's easier said than done but one of the most powerful ideas i've ever or things i've learned absolutely dude i love that analogy and for me what it becomes is can i just be with whatever it is that's coming up inside of me at all times and just allow it you know because the not dealing with the thing manifests in other ways it start it it manifests as like little irritations with my family like I'm, I'm frustrated fucking doing the laundry or doing the dishes or, you know, cause my wife said something to me that she needed my help with something when I felt I didn't have the time, you know, and it becomes like, you know, you get frustrated with like the little tiny shit that we all have to deal with, you know, like right now we've got a puppy, we've got a new puppy, we've got home renovations going on there's a million things to get frustrated about but if you can shift your perspective and just feel whatever it is that's happening and be with that you just have a much more and the, the beautiful part about it man is like we're always running to the next thing like i'll be happy then i'll be happy then I'll be satisfied when I'll be, you know, excited or fulfilled when this happens, when I get that thing, et cetera. And that's just a really incomplete way to live life. It's a really discontented way to go about living this life. And when you can just slow the fuck down and be with whatever it is that comes, it's so rich. Life is so fucking rich. Every moment is mind-bogglingly rich with experience and feeling and depth and magic. This is this, beautiful. And um, it just reminds me of my experience. My first time I did a float tank in Bali. Mm. Love <laughs> and, the sound of that. Oh, gosh. And I was so overstimulated. And I did this uh, flow tank. And I was taking a shower beforehand. I saw these ants on the wall. I'm like, oh, what are these ants doing here? Gross. Oh, my gosh. And I was just so frustrated. <laughs> and then I took that. I did that flow tank. And I took that shower. I'm like, oh, look at these ants. They're alive. They're living. Amazing. They're so beautiful. <gasps> Life is beautiful. <laughs> I love that, dude. It's so true. It's so true, man. And, it, and nothing changed. Nothing changed but your perspective. You know? That's it. Um, I want to ask you a question. We ask all our, our guests, and that is, uh, I think you have to get going, and that is, if you had one message for the world, what would that message be? Mm, I did a podcast earlier. A guy asked me a similar question. And I would say two things. Two things. Okay. Trust the universe, AKA have faith in the process. And then I would say, enjoy every moment or be as aware and present 
as you possibly can be in every moment. Because if you can do that, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. Having the presence in every moment is going to, you're going to realize that you're exactly where you need to be. And the information that you gather from every moment is going to tell you exactly where you need to go. So that's what I would say to that. Beautiful. I was taking, taking the note. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So where can people find you, everything you're doing, social media, your podcast, et cetera. Social media, uh, pretty much everything is at EDS Britain. Um, that's my first three initials and my last name, Evan Daniel Smith, Britain, EDS Britain on Instagram and Twitter. Um, check me out my podcast, the ebb and flow podcast available on all podcast platforms. You can also check me out now on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash EDS Britain. I do just in-depth content guided meditations, workouts, yoga flows, mindset, movement, nutrition, motivation. Um, and then on YouTube, I've started putting up a lot of video content. Uh, YouTube is just at Eben Britain is my channel. And I really appreciate you guys, man. I love what you're doing and keep rocking, you know? Thank you. Thanks. I really enjoyed it. I love this, like, I love real connection absolutely dude nothing talk, better yeah. man oh god it's good it's i feel like it's a something that i wish there was more of these days as opposed to i always find it fascinating so i'm just like how you doing I'm, I'm good and i love being like how are you really <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love doing that i love that dude do that man i'm good i'm good i'm good man i'm really good are you are you? And I love it. When, I love it when they can just be vulnerable and share. I'm not. I'm having a hard time. This and then they let it all out, and I'm like, "Thank you." It's powerful. I'm inspired powerful. by your realness, and they're like, "Oh, whoa!" I was expecting to be like shamed and feel terrible about this, but, but yeah. So thank yeah, you, it's man. always right. funny, man, when you're vulnerable and people are like, "Don't, don't be sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't be tired." <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. For sure, <laughs> you know. I don't get relate. <laughs> but, hey, hey, Evan, you should do this. You should do that. Yeah. Oh, really? You should. You should do that. <laughs> That's our whole culture, dude. It's like, don't be you. Do this. Think <laughs> like this. Act like this. Wear these clothes. Pop these pills. <laughs> Drive this car. Yeah. Fuck, at some point we're just like screaming from the inside. Get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, dude. Yeah, you know? it's, and oh, that's yeah, your yeah. spirit calling. I'll finish with that. That's your spirit calling going. Kyle, had, All right, we've had enough. Kyle, you had a question, Kyle? Oh, I, were you on Ricky Williams' podcast or? Yeah, man. Did you come on yours. Oh, man. I was I on his. <laughs> I've been wanting to have him on our show. If there's any way you could give us a warm lead to him or something. I'll do I'll try I'll do my best, man. Ricky's aloof. He's like on another <laughs> planet most days. But I can I, understand that as well. That's why we love him. I, I socially I socially challenged Kyle to ask you. <laughs> I love that, bro. Um, I love uh, his documentary on Netflix. I just like, oh I would definitely want to interview him one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love Ricky. I mean, he was always he was always super inspirational as my dog starting to freak out. All right, dudes. I'll I'll uh I'll see about making that introduction. And I really okay. appreciate you guys. All right. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. You're amazing, man. I just want to thank you again for coming on. It was real. I loved it. Yeah. Thank you guys. I loved it as well. I appreciate you. Have a great Thank day. You.